Reef Bum is sponsored by Champion Lighting and Supply, Polo Reef, and Fauna Marine. Are there certain fish that reef keepers should try to avoid because they're more prone to uh, disease? You know, I, I didn't realize, but green chromas apparently uh, are very prone to a particular disease. They are the poster child for uranema. Um, they, again, tend to carry a lot of different protozoal diseases, but most often it is uranema. And that in itself is a particularly difficult protozoal disease to treat. It's lethal, it's lethal quickly. Um, so action has to be done very aggressively and fast. In, in terms of these, you know, chromises, that's why again, quarantine, because then you throw in 30 chromises, you don't notice that one of them has a huge ulcer on it until a couple of days later. And now that entire time, those, part those par uh, particles are then being released into the environment. The problem with like in that situation is even if you remove the fish, that uranema is still in the tank. That being said, even if you removed all of the fish out of that tank at that time, there's no follow up period for uranema. It can live off the environment. It can live off bacteria in the environment. So once it's in that tank, there is no treating it. Ooh. There's nothing. There's nothing you can do to Bad. remove it from the. Yeah, unless unless you bleach the system and start over. No good. Again, that being said. Um, I think that uranema, and again, don't hold me by this number, is probably present in about mm, 75 to 90 percent of tanks out there. Really? But that doesn't that doesn't mean that it's clinical, though. So again, it's living in the environment. It's doing its own thing, but it's not. It's only when fish become stressed. Whether that stress is because of you know lack of feeding, whether that stress is because overcrowding, whether that stress is fish fighting, and that stress brings it out, and that's when it really starts to proliferate. Again, if you look through your sand bed, or you look through, you know, let's say you're overfeeding the tank, and you take some of that, you know, you know, mysis that's been sitting at the bottom of the tank for the day, and you look under the microscope of that, you're probably going to see some uranema particles. But again, don't. That doesn't mean to panic. Oh, everyone's going to get uranema. Because again, I feel again, this is purely my feeling solely on what I've seen out in, in the industry is that uranema is incredibly prevalent. Um, so again, it's avoiding it before it gets in the tank. Because once it's in the tank, it may not be, you know, clinical for years. You know, you have, you know, everything is going great. You have a power outage, you know, for a day and a half. And now everybody's stressed and all of a sudden your anema blew out of, you know, population. Um, and you haven't even added a tank in, you know, six months, added a fish in six months. Um, so again, it's all about minimizing that stress. Well, I love green chromis, and I think I've added my last green chromis uh, for a long <laughs> time, man. You scared me straight there, uh, Alex. What what are the uh, the signs of uranema again? So uranema has three actually different presentations. One, there's external uranema, which is what we classically see. Um, so that's that red banding. That's the ulceration of the skin. That's sometimes they'll get like a gray color. Um, and sometimes we'll get like plaques over the operculum or like, like a plaque-like consistency over the fish, increased um, mucus around the fish. Um, that would be like that really classic external. By the time you see the ulceration, it's essentially critical care and very intensive. Um, but we'll get into that. Uh, then we have internal uranema. So that's something that I've started to see more of. Um, and I feel like it's not something that's really talked about, you know, in, in the hobby. But I was actually doing um, fecal samples um, in quarantine. So I take, I unfortunately sit there, watch the fish, um, have a bowel movement, immediately take that sample, put it under microscopy. Um, and I was finding uranema within these fecal samples. And then I noticed, started to notice that once these, you know, fish that had this internal uranema, they'd actually get a, you know, a bruising or ulceration from the inside out, rather than you'd think that the ulceration comes from the outside from external uranema. Um, so when we have this internal uranema, again, much more intensive processes, topical medication isn't going to help you. Um, it's only, you know, very, very intensive wound care. 
um, essentially sealing that ulcer. Because again, once the fish shows that ulceration, whether it's coming from the inside or the outside, that's what's going to kill it first. The uronema isn't. What happens is we have a fish that's essentially hypotonic to the environment. So the environment in the salt water is saltier than the fish itself. So it starts to pull fluid out through that wound. And when we start pulling fluid out through that wound, we start, we end up with renal failure and cardiac failure. So they actually die from dehydration faster than they die from the wound itself. So the moment we see a wound, that needs to be immediately sealed. Um, so what I like to use, and again, it changes based on the instance, but actually like mucinua honey is actually a really nice sealant because one, it's antibacterial in itself. And two, it stays on the fish because again, topical meds on fish are a little bit difficult. But if you put a little bit of honey over that wound, one, it seals it, two, it's antibacterial. And three, now once we start getting meds into the fish, we can start treating the actual protozoal infection and hopefully it gives it time to recreate that barrier. And that would be again the same thing for uh, internal urine. And then, I, I was going to ask: would 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 UV at least help um, decrease the likelihood that your the urine the urinema would become active? Does that help at all if you're having uh, running UV twenty four seven? Yeah, so there's no studies that really put quantification on this. Um, but in the way that I think about it is, you know, let's say we have a 300 gallon tank, you know, the amount of, you know, let's say we're over, you know, turning over, let's say 100% volume constantly, you know, you've got your anema in the sand bed in the rocks on the fish, you're only going to get the free swimming your anema. So it's nice in theory, I think it might make make people feel better. But again, I don't know if there's any definitive data that says this will lower the chances of your anema. Again, if you have a massive outbreak, potentially, yeah. But again, if it's to keep it, once it's like a subclinical level, I don't think that it's really going to change things too much.